Bonjour everyone, I'm Marlous, a Dutch business owner, and I moved to Burgundy in France in 2019 with my family. And on my channel, I share our slow and simple life here in the French countryside. I talk about brocante, cooking, beautiful places to visit in our region and other parts of France. And every now and then, I do a home tour in which I take you to a gorgeous French house. And I'm happy to share another one of those beautiful houses with you in this video. Today I'm taking you to the Tarn et Garonne region and if visiting France's most beautiful villages is on your bucket list, I highly recommend you put this village on your list. I felt as if I had walked into the set of a romantic historic French novel. And actually the village was used to shoot many of the scenes for the movie The Hundred Foot Journey. In a quiet little street in the center of this village, we find Maison Saint-Antonin, where I'm taking you for today's home tour. Corina and Shane moved to this village from Australia nine years ago, and three years ago bought this house to rent it as a gîte. So excited to see this. So fantastic to have you here. We've had this for uh, a bit over three years now. Very bright. Yeah, for where it is, it's quite, um, because it doesn't face south, mm -hmm. um, but it's still quite bright here, which is really lovely. Because you put in all the whites. The white really reflects the, the light, and um, I like a calm kind of, space yeah <laughs> ambience which... yeah and it's really beautiful in in summer so because it doesn't face south it's beautiful and cool mm. people often think there's a air conditioner but, it's, but you don't need them in you these don't need homes. It. yeah it's so beautiful and cool here in summer and cozy and warm in winter and yeah so um, when we bought the house um the, the outside was actually already done up so we were very lucky there and it was what we liked. Um, but there was shutters here to have a window box. We can't shut them. Mm -hmm. um, and then there was no shutters on any of the other windows upstairs or over or anywhere else. So I came up with the idea of having um, internal shutters for privacy. So in the evenings, you know, you can just kind of shut them like that and they hook on. So that gorgeous picture, tell me. <laughs> yeah, so this picture, oh, there's a story behind that actually. So um, this beautiful woman, her and her partner came and stayed and when they found out, she found out I was a photographer, she said, it's my 35th birthday, uh, can you do me a photo shoot? But she looked like Audrey Hepburn. She was so divine. And I just, you know, because I know my village really well and when I do photo shoots, so we, we went for a one hour session. And this is one of the shots that I captured of, of that session. The house had already been renovated when they bought it and they didn't just want to rip everything out that was still good. And that's also from an ecological standpoint. 
And I think Corina very cleverly worked with what was there, and she very intentionally chose a color palette. I look at the colors in those, they're in the artworks. Yeah. Like there's a kind of a burgundy in this. Here. Yes. And um, the, in fact, the kitchen like was already here mm -hmm. that probably isn't what I would pick if I was doing like a house from scratch I was very lucky that that wine color is just a lovely color and the gravy boat that had that color <laughs> the blank canvas I wanted which was a lot of white um, antiques I, I knew that um, but I wanted to create a, a kind of cohesive story so that when you enter you, you feel like you're in another world basically kind of a cross between Parisian apartment style and French country meets yeah. a little bit of modern um, but I'm very passionate about art and curating pieces that are meaningful. And I had a vision of a wall of women. I've seen in a lot of decorating books, like walls of um, oil paintings, portraits, and it's often men. But when we bought the house we live in, which is a couple of streets away, uh, we bought it from four sisters who had inherited it. And they came to visit me one day and told me the most incredible story. Who knows if it's true? <laughs> but what they told me was that um, the house that we live in had been in their family for four or five generations. And they said that in the, the war between the Protestants and the Catholics, there was a lot of fighting going on around here and the king came to see what was happening mm -hmm. and their grandma, however many times back, shot the crown off the king. Really? And they said, this house has been filled with courageous women and you're the next one. Wow. Which I get very emotional. Yes, sort of saying. I love that. So I had this vision for this house to have a wall of women because I feel like we don't always get <laughs> the credit we deserve. Credit. <laughs> so I had the vision for that and it's taken years for me to source these paintings. But when I hung um, that beautiful woman on the wall, she was the first one I got, I was blown away by the colour of her lips yeah. match perfectly the burgundy tone on the kitchen. And it just, like, it's such a joy when those unexpected surprises happen and come together in a fake vinyl floor timber like yeah, like yeah, lino yeah. to look like a wooden floor yeah and then there was a wooden floor on the yeah no, it wasn't nice at all and also it had the most god awful glue like it took shane tried everything and then we had to pay someone with a special machine to, oh, to for get the it sanding, off it, yes. it was the most expensive thing we did was he he was cursing me <laughs> Shane and Corina decorated the house with thrifted and Polkanta furniture and some pieces that they brought from Australia. I think it's the kind of furniture when you see them on Instagram, you go, oh, that's easy to find, but it's actually not easy to find one that is damaged and weathered in the right way. Uh, um, and this cupboard here with the shield doors is from Australia. It's a rare wood, um, kari pine. It's a meat safe. So this would have gone in the kitchen mm -hmm. and probably even had a little like hutch on top for plates and mm -hmm. things. This is, we need handles. This is your 
cut the ring and then that's just a drawer and then at the moment we just store extra magazines and books and infos for the guests so this is um i'm pretty sure shane could probably confirm but kari pine i think is a tasmanian wood so a little it's touch very... of australia yeah, in your so french we had this in our house in australia upstairs are two comfortable bedrooms and a bathroom so the house can sleep four we love to have a picnic camper and rug so people can go and enjoy a picnic on the river if they want or if they're doing a day trip somewhere. The grand chambre, the big, the biggest this one. This one? Is that yeah. this one? Yeah, this is the biggest one. I'll follow one. you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it has a skylight. That's why it's so bright. Yeah, it's nice and bright. So what we did here, actually, the space was interesting. When you come came to the top of the stairs, in fact, this wall here went all the way along mm. and the window there, it was just like a weird little space. So um, my husband, Shane, uh, ripped out this wall, built this one, mm -hmm. which then made the space in the bedroom. So oh, now, wow. Yeah. Oh, that's that dresser is gorgeous. Yeah, and that's another cowrie pine um, antique from Australia that Chester draws. bed is an antique from Australia and um, we bought it when we got married and had it restored. We've been married nearly 35 years and it was 120 years old when we bought it. So mm. We repainted everything but I loved the tiles and that was really daggy. Do you know what the word daggy means? No. <laughs> it's an Australian term. Not very nice. Um, and again, th this was just too good to rip out. Like, so we wanted to be good for the environment by not unnecessarily like ripping things out. Yeah. Just for the sake of it. Um, and there was a budget thing as well. We have um, containers that we can decant can't into. Mm -hmm. And we've used uh, Marie's Fabre body wash and shampoo. Um, that's all natural and made in France. So yeah, when we come in here, this is the slightly smaller room. Very cozy. Yeah. It is cozy, even though it's all white, it feels very yeah. enveloping as they yes. say in French. Yeah, like, yeah, it's like a hug. I love it. Like and everybody compliments on the white. The they just say it's uh, très clair. It's not stark and no. it's really nice yeah. and warm and cozy. Yeah. If, it, even the temperature and, and it's it was freaking I've, cold this morning. Yeah, I've heat is on. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be afraid to have some blank walls in a space.
That is actually a 1945 lithography by Rodin signed, which is pretty cool. So yeah, part of the ethos of this house is like for rest and restoration. So I've intentionally kept the palettes uh, calming, the colour palettes, the, there's space on the walls to give your mind rest and space to enjoy art. Um, and I've intentionally not put TV or there's Wi-Fi, but there's no kind of other digital yeah. things so that you can actually read books and bring yourself right down. <laughs> fallen in love with this village already and we're going to quickly do some grocery shopping for a cheese platter that we'll have tomorrow because tonight Karina's husband Shane is going to cook for us. He has a catering business and he caters for weddings. One of the things, but that's not all he does, but one of the things that he really likes to cook is Lebanese medza and I am so excited to be trying those.
called Sosiel, is a village not far from here, which is high up. It's a village in the sky, they call it, because it's like attached to the mountain. Yeah. And these uh, biscuits are the specialty from there. On a des bons mots. Très bien. Mais ça garde bien les goûts. Ouais, ouais, mais voilà, voilà. C'est pas moi qui suis lente, c'est la machine. Voilà, mais c'est fait exprès. C'est vrai Yeah, it used to be tannery, so a tanning town. So when you look up, now in my house where I live, and probably in this one, but when you look up, sometimes you'll see the tops of these buildings where it's more open. Yeah. There's no windows, and that's where they drive the leather. Amazing to think, 13th century. Yeah. <clears throat> and do you know the story of why you see this jut out? No. Yeah. So, um, you know the window tax. Oh yeah. Okay. So there was also to do with land tax. Okay. So where the building goes straight up from the ground they're getting taxed on so to make it bigger they went like came out a level up uh we have some chicken brochette and oh, falafel wow. still steaming so the brochettes uh spice with oh. salt pepper olive oil a little bit of garlic a bit of ginger powder paprika uh oregano what else, what else, what else? Mint, parsley, onion. <laughs> voilà. Thank you so much. No problem. My pleasure. That literally just transported me back. He said, like, I've never tasted those things as authentic mm. as, like, my mum makes, who is Lebanese. Like, the, um... The next day was Sunday, which is market day in Saint-Antonin-Nobleval, 
And Karina had prepared a breakfast that she put for me in the kitchen and in the fridge. And after I'd finished my breakfast, she came to pick me up so we could go out and explore the market and also discover, honestly, how many brocante shops are in this village. I was in brocante heaven. And like I said, this village had so many gorgeous brocante shops, but also many other quaint little shops like this English bookshop and also this concept store, Hello June, that I really liked. But there's other ones there. You, I like mi mixing and matching. Them. Me too. Yeah, I, I have these ones at home. I'm starting to get broken. It's three, four, twelve euros. It's really reasonable. Yeah, I actually have these at home. I should get them to save those. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure they're as green as I want, but yeah. They can find things on there. We post to so you post a couple of times a week. Okay. A lot of the clothes we post and objects as well. Okay. And the other two Instagrams are, are our ours. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So this really nice shop, Le Batel, is one of the many that I've discovered in this village. They also sell online, so you can find all of their information in the description box. But I'm going to keep 
a couple of other ones for next videos because actually in the afternoon of this Sunday, Corina took me to a really gorgeous medieval little town where they had a wonderful bourgogne to shop. But I'm keeping all of that for next videos, else this will be too long. I really do hope you've enjoyed discovering Maison Saint-Antonin and the beautiful village that it's in. And if there's anything you want to share with me or Corina, we'd love to hear from you in the comments. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.